lead us into our Scripture reading. And I want you to turn with me to the Word of God tonight, to the Old Testament book of Nahum again, please. And we're in Nahum chapter 1, the Old Testament book of the prophet Nahum. And I want to thank Colette for her ministry again this evening. And we do pray for her that the Lord will continue to bless her ministry as she sings for the Lord around the province. But that last piece, don't go home without the Lord. I'll tell you why it's a good piece. Because when we come to Nahum chapter 1, verse 2, take a good look at it. It says, God is jealous, and the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebuketh the sea and maketh it dry and dryeth up all the rivers. Bashan languisheth and Carmel, and the flower of Lebanon languisheth. The mountains quake at him, and the hills melt, and the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation? And who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the solemn reading of his truth this evening. There are great and glorious truths declared in the greatest message ever could be told. And that tonight is the gospel message. <coughs> in the gospel message tonight, there's the great truth of God's love. You know, friend, this evening you wouldn't be preaching the gospel tonight if you didn't preach the love of God. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, that's an amazing fact tonight. For God so loved the world this world tonight that is so sinful, this world tonight that is so evil, this world tonight that is so wicked, that's an amazing fact tonight. The greatest amazing fact is this, for God so loved the world. I want you to know tonight, God loves you. God loves you. But then in John 3, 16, not only do you have the amazing fact, but you have an accurate fact, because it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. You know, the Bible says, But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth His Son into the world. You know, friends, this evening, that's the most accurate fact, you know. It wasn't an accident. At the very moment God appointed, His Son came into this world. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son to die on the cross, to take your place, my dear friend, and to shed His precious blood in order that you could be saved. Ah, but you know, friend, this evening, that's not only an amazing fact of His love and the accurate fact of His love, but here's the assuring fact of His love, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Oh, dear sinner friend, that's a wonderful assuring fact this evening, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And you know, friend, God's love tonight is one of the greatest truths that lies behind the gospel message. I'll tell you another thing this evening. God's mercy is another great fact that lies behind the gospel message. Do you remember what we read in Isaiah 55 and 7? But let the wicked forsake his way, 
and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, for he will have mercy, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Let the wicked, that's the recipients of his mercy, and the unrighteous, let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, that's the road to God's mercy. Oh, there has to be a turning away from sin. Oh, you can come with your sin. You can come with your sin, all right, but there has to be a turning away from your sin. Let the wicked man forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord. That's the, that's the recipients and the, 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 and, and the road. But here's the reality. And he will have mercy. Glory to God, he'll have mercy. If you come as a sinner to Jesus this evening, you'll find mercy. Doesn't matter who you are or what you've done, you'll find mercy. And here's the reward of his mercy, for he will abundantly pardon. Oh, glory to God for the love of God. Glory to God tonight for the mercy of God. Glory to God tonight for the grace of God. For the grace of God. Because the grace of God this evening is another great truth that lies from behind the gospel message. You remember what we read in, in Romans 3, 24, being justified freely by His grace. Oh, friend, that's a wonderful truth tonight. Being justified, being left in the presence of God as if you had never sinned. Never sinned in your life. That's what grace can do for you. Being justified, that's the power of grace. Freely, that's the price of grace. And then you've got the provision by His grace. Where would any of us be tonight but for the love of God? Unsafe, friend. Get that into your heart tonight. Where would you be but for the love of God? Where would you be tonight but for the mercy of God? Where would you be tonight but for the very grace of God? I'll tell you where you'll be. You'll be in hell. You would be in hell. I'd be in hell. Every man and woman in this meeting night would be in hell. But for the love of God, but for the mercy of God, but for the Lord's mercies were not consumed. And then, but for the grace of God. Oh, thank God tonight for those three great facts of the gospel message. The love of God, yes. The grace of God, yes. And the mercy of God. Ah, but you know, God doesn't want to talk to us this evening about the love of God. He's not going to talk to us tonight about the mercy of God. He's not going to talk to us tonight about, 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 the, about the grace of God. God wants to talk to us on the other side of the coin tonight. God wants to talk to us about the anger of God. Oh, we'll hear plenty preached on the love of God, and that's good. And we'll hear plenty preached on the mercy of God, and that's good. We hear plenty preached on the grace of God, ah, but that's good. But not too many preach on the anger of God. On the anger of God. The love of God, that's an amazing truth. The mercy of God, that's an appealing truth. The grace of God, that's an assuring truth. Ah, but the anger of God, that's an awful truth. The anger of God. That's God's message to me. The anger of God. Do you know what the Bible says, my dear unsafe friend, in Hebrews 10 and 31? It's a fearful thing to fall into the hand of the living God. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Do you ever think of that, dear unsafe friend, tonight? The day when you'll breathe your last, and the day when you'll fall into the hands of the living God. It's a fearful thing. In fact, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 11, he says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. That's why I go about preaching at mission. This is why I preach the way I do preach. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Oh, friend, God wants to talk to you tonight not about His love, not about His mercy, not about His grace. You've heard it all before. God wants to talk to you about something maybe you've never heard before. The anger of God. You ever think about His anger tonight? The anger of God. 
Oh, dear unsafe friend, think of it. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. You know, friend, as we bring this meeting to a close, from our Scripture reading tonight, there's a lot to learn about the anger of God. Oh, but there's a lot to learn about the anger of God. You know, the first thing God wants to speak to us all about this evening, and it's this. First of all, there is the slowness of his anger. We read there in verse 3, the Lord is slow to anger. You know, friend, tonight, where would you be this evening if God wasn't slow to anger? You see, friend, this evening, tonight, there's the mercy of God Tonight there is the grace of God. Tonight there is the love of God that is being offered in all its fullness. But tonight there's the anger of God that looms overhead. Aye, the anger of God that looms overhead. And you know, dear unsafe friend, this evening, how many times already has God spoken to you? You have sat in missions. You have sat in meetings. And yet tonight, unsafe friend, you linger. You linger in your sin. And the very fact you're sitting in this meeting tonight proves the slowness of God's anger. You know, friend, tonight, in Isaiah 48 and verse 9, we read these words. For my name's sake, I will defer my anger. You think for a wee minute, maybe, about the near misses you've had over life. Maybe the near miss you had in a car one time. Maybe the near miss through a farming accident. You think for a minute of maybe the near misses you've had in a building site. Maybe a heart attack. And you remember this, the reason why you survived it, and the only reason is because God is slow to anger. Our friend tonight, The anger of God. It's as real as the love of God. The anger of God, it's as real as the mercy of God. The anger of God is as real as the grace of God. The anger of God. I want you to know this evening, God is holy. God is to be feared. God is almighty. And the question is, why is God slow to anger? Do you want to know why he's slow to anger? 
to encourage you to repent. God is slow to anger to give you time. When God pronounced judgment on this world, He was slow to anger. When God pronounced judgment on this world before, He was slow to anger. Why? Because He gave this world 120 years and seven days. When God pronounced judgment that He was going to destroy this world in the flood, He gave this world 120 years plus seven days. God is slow to anger. And there's some of you here tonight and you've been hearing this message week in and week out and the reason why you're here tonight because of the slowness of God's anger. The Lord is slow to anger. But then in this same portion, in that very same verse, you have there tonight not only the slowness of his anger, but you have there tonight the subjects of his anger. Because it says in that verse, the Lord is slow to anger and in great power and will not at all acquit the wicked. You remember this tonight, God's anger may be slow but it is sure. God's anger may be slow, but it's sure. God's patience will one day become God's punishment to you. And this is the reality. Who are the wicked? The wicked are those who turn their backs on Christ. The wicked are those who turn their back upon His blood. The wicked tonight are those who turn their back upon His sacrifice. The wicked are those who turn their back tonight on what Christ offers and that salvation. That's who the subjects are for God's anger. O oh, sinner, God's patience may weary someday and leave thy sad soul in the blast. We read in Romans chapter 5, but God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners. That's us tonight. That's the name stamped upon every soul in that's born into this world, sinner. You see, in God's sight tonight, the word unionist isn't seen. The word Protestant isn't seen. The word, the word orange isn't seen. The word Republican isn't seen. Sinner is written across every soul. And you know, my dear unsafe friend, there's many tonight, and they're Christian, but they're still subjects to God's anger. There's many tonight, and they're confirmed. They're still subjects to God's anger. There's many tonight who would never miss church. They're subjects to God's anger. There are many this evening who wouldn't miss a meeting, but they're subject to God's anger. And my dear unsaved friend tonight, when you look to the cross, and you see the blessed Christ of God crucified there, and you've been told it was for you and for your sin that they nailed him there. And you've been told time and time again 
that in love and in mercy he hung there bearing your shame and bearing your sin. And time and time again, you've turned your back on him. You've turned your back on his love. You've turned your back on his mercy. You've turned your back on his grace. And yet, all those times when God had given you chances in the past, and yet he's slow to anger. Our oh, friend tonight, every person that's holding on to their good works, subject to God's anger. Those who are trusting in good deeds are subject to his anger. Those who are holding on to anything but Christ is subject to God's anger. And I'm telling you, God's anger is slow, but it's sure. And God gave his son to the cross for you. And God allowed his son to die for you. And God allowed his son to shed his blood for you. And you've turned your back on him all these years. You're the subject of his anger. There's the slowness of his anger in this passage. And there's the subjects of his anger in this passage. But there's the severity of his anger in this passage. You look at verse 6 and listen to what it says. Who can stand before his indignation? Listen to this. And who can abide in the fierceness of his anger. Oh, friend, the severity of God's anger tonight. Who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? There's a wee verse in Proverbs 1. And 24. And this is what God says. Because I have called and ye refuse, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye set at naught my counsel and with none of my reproof. Listen to what God goes on to say. I will laugh at your calamity and will mock you when your fear cometh. Who shall obey in the fierceness of his anger? But tonight, God's not dealing in anger. He's dealing in love. He's dealing in grace. He's dealing in mercy. One more time, love. He deals in love. One more, more time, sir, he deals in mercy with you. One more time he deals in grace. Tell me, will you come tonight? Will you come tonight? Because the anger of God may be held back in you for one more night to give you this chance. The anger of God is slow. But it's sure. Don't reject a son tonight again. Receive him. Trust him. For who shall abide in the fierceness of his anger?
Let's all take a wee moment and bow in prayer. God's anger tonight is just. God's anger tonight is righteous because the judge of all the earth will do right. And sinner friend tonight, flee to the arms of the Savior. Turn away from any old silly notion that you have that you're going to be saved in some other way. There's no other name under heaven given amongst men than that of the Lord Jesus that you must be saved. We come to the Lord Jesus tonight. Make him yours, lest the anger of God be your portion for all of eternity. Lord, tonight, Give wisdom, we pray. Give deciding faith. And Lord, tonight, that there will be joy in the presence of angels over sinners coming to repentance. We pray through our lovely Savior's name. Amen. And amen. Our closing hymns, 278 in the Red Hymn Book. Listen, friends, the Lord